Jeremy S. Cook here, and today I'll be going over how I got a gigantic heatsink for my Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 from an old motherboard. It's a Lenovo desktop PC that used to run my CNC router, and then before that it was an off-lease computer, so who knows where it was before that, but I'm just glad I didn't throw it out because this has been quite the, quite the source of a number of really nice parts. While I wanted this to be huge, my first task was actually to cut it down so it would go between the camera port and the GPIO pins. Now, I probably could have done this on a, a bandsaw as well, or probably many other different means, but decided on the milling machine, just to, you know, put a little slot down the middle and then bent it back and forth until it snapped off. After that, I put it on my bandsaw to, to smooth it out a little bit and even did a little bit more work on the milling machine to get it nice and smooth. So after that, though, you might be wondering what exactly is the baseline for my Raspberry Pi without the heatsink. So when I'm transferring files, it looks like it's bouncing around about 72, 71 degrees. And then just sitting there, we're, we're looking in the high 50s, like 58. So that seems a little high to me, but you can let me know in the comments what you think about that. So that, that being said, the Raspberry Pi, the processor itself has about a, about a quarter, quarter square inch of surface area without any sort of heat sink. Now these heat sinks, each fin has two square inches per side. So that adds up to be about 32 square inches of surface area plus a little bit on the bottom. So we're talking about nearly 130 times the surface area of just the chip itself. I wasn't sure how this would work out exactly with the thermal tape and such, but I thought there was a pretty good chance it will improve things at least a little bit. So opening up the box here, I, I put the, the gigantic heat sink on my Raspberry Pi just to see where I'd need to place the thermal tape. I marked that area with the Sharpie and then applied the thermal tape itself. I'm not sure how this compares to thermal paste, but my idea here was that the thermal tape would hold it down pretty well so I wouldn't have to use any sort of other sort of attachment. One problem here is that even if it was held down nicely, the heatsink itself is very conductive electrically, so I didn't want it to short anything out, so I did put some electrical tape on the sides, making that nice and insulating. I then took the plastic off the other side of the tape and it was ready to stick on. Of course, I wanted to get this in the right area because that thermal tape does do a really good job of sticking down, so I didn't want to have to reposition it once it was, was on there nicely. Push it down and then you can see just a few little, little jabs to make sure it's secure. After that, I closed up the Pi's case, which is for my uh, NAS setup that I made earlier. Incidentally, it's from the same Lenovo desktop that I got the heatsink from, so I thought that was kind of cool. So after all that is done, just sitting around, it's, it's about 50 degrees Celsius. Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, let it settle down a little bit more and then it's about 52. So doing nothing about 52, but obviously doing nothing is not what we want. I then tested it when it was transferring files. And as you can see here, it, it works out to be about 54 degrees, maybe 56, 57, once it gets settled down. You were talking about about a 15 degrees Celsius improvement, which works out to be right over, just over 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So pretty good, pretty good improvement. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out considering I'm not using any sort of active cooling, any sort of fan, whatever. So pretty happy with this. Uh, I guess it's obviously a, kind of a hilariously gigantic heat sink, but hey, I, I thought it looked cool and nice to recycle something. Here's the pie in action. It's still, the heatsink is still a little bit hot to the touch, or at least warm. Overall though, I'm quite happy with how this project turned out. If you liked it, I'd invite you to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, or even leave me a comment. So thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.